We're gonna talk about fake gurus. There's a lot of them out there and we're gonna talk about it today. Actually, I'm not gonna talk about it. I'm gonna to react to another person talking about it, but I am working on a series where I'm gonna go over a lot of these red flags that these fake gurus like to use. I'm gonna dedicate each episode to a specific red flag. That way, while you're on your journey, you know what to look out for, all right? And yes, I'm gonna go over examples as well. But before we get into that, make sure you subscribe if you're brand new. Thank you for joining the Dummy Family. And of course, um, hopefully you like my new background. Again, if you're brand new, this is whatever to you, but everyone else has been following me. I got a new camera, yes. I got the Sony a7C. I love it a lot more than my Canon. Um, it was very expensive, so hopefully I can sell my Canon gear to pay for this. So, but you're not here for that, so who cares? Why, 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 why am I talking about this? Anyways, let's get straight into it. Hopefully people who haven't dipped off already, make sure you subscribe, like, and share this video at the end. I really appreciate it, it would help me out. I'm trying to get to 6,000 by the end of the year. So let's switch over to this video, which is made by a guy named John uh, Kogan. He's got 242,000 subscribers. And he did a video called Fake Gurus, Where Is The Line? Because seriously, where is the line with some of these people? They seem to cross it more than others. So let's see what he has to say. I haven't watched this video myself. So let's react to it together. Let's get ready for that epic transition. One, two, and three. Oh, already starting off with... um. What's his name? Here in my garage. Ty Lopez. Fake gurus. Where should we draw the line? On one side, we have tons of shady business gurus pumping all sorts of crypto schemes, drop shipping strategies, and online courses. And on the other side, we have massively successful billionaires who are endlessly worshipped online. But we never really talk about the middle. What about the people that give out some... Word to your mother, for real. How many of you are literally worshiping Elon Musk like he's the messiah of everything? My friend told me something that really makes sense, and um, we were having that discussion, and he's kind of on point about this. Hey, I'm going to go to the main screen real quick so you guys can see me. One of the things that he said is like, in this country, we worship billionaires like they have the solutions to everything in this world. For example, Bill Gates, who created, you know, Windows basically essentially is a guy for computers, right? He's what you think of when it comes to computers. Yet for some reason he sits on the board when it comes to medical decisions for the world. For example, the pandemic during COVID, there was, I heard some controversy with him trying to keep the vaccines over here and then sell them to, you know, third world countries, just stuff like that. Or um, I think uh, Jeff Bezos, which is the owner of Amazon, he's sitting on the board of some educational school stuff, some some weird stuff like that. So it's things like that you have to think about. Um, why is Siri talking to me? Sometimes Siri just does her own thing. Don't know why. But um, yeah, just stuff like that. So you have Elon Musk, just because he created this amazing, but first of all, he didn't create Tesla, just to be clear, look at the history of that. He didn't create it. Um, he was a founder, one of the founders of PayPal, had money, then obviously um, invested into Tesla. But just because he's good on the engineering aspects does not mean he knows how to run a social media company or, you know, send rockets to space, even though he's been doing a hell of a good job on it. All I'm saying is that sometimes we put way too many of these billionaires on this pedestal, like they know everything and they're the solutions to everything. Maybe some of them are just good at running businesses and that's about it. Anyways, that was my rant. I know. Let's get back to the video. You didn't come here for that. You came here to watch this video. So let's get back into it. Some advice, but aren't at that world famous level yet. Uh, How can we separate the good from the bad? Kevin. And where do you finance YouTubers like Graham, Graham Stephan, Stephan fit in? Well, to answer this, we need to develop some rules that we can use to assess the value of a particular business guru. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to look back and see who's been making good calls for years and who's clearly just been riding trends <laughs> and cashing in. So our first filter should just be the quality of the advice given out by a particular person. One of the biggest problems with fake gurus is that they tend to lead you astray. They'll tell you to invest at the worst possible times and then quickly move on to the next trendy investment. Did you guys hear that? They tend to tell you to invest in the worst possible times, right? The worst. Let's be real. How many of you have been investing in buying the dip for the past year and you're down 40 to 60% year to date? Think about that. Do your own due diligence, ladies and gentlemen. Do your own. Or, or listen to Money Market Truths, the podcast I'm on every single, was it Wednesday, Tuesdays? Tuesdays, and we're going to be doing it twice a month starting next year. Anyways, uh, shameless plug. You know, I don't have any sponsors. 
so. As soon as the last one collapses. In fact, watching fake gurus pump a particular asset can actually be a good indicator that things are about to crash. That's what happened in 1929, right before the Great Depression. Joseph Kennedy, who was the father of JFK, was a prominent businessman and investor at the time. The economy was booming throughout the 1920s, and it looked like everything just wouldn't stop going up in value. But then, a friend told Kennedy that he noticed something very odd happening. Taxi drivers had started giving him stock tips, and his shoeshine boy could give him a complete summary of the day's financial news as he worked with the rag and polish. Damn peasants. I'm sorry, um, uh, my humor sometimes is off. Even the homeless man on the street in front of his office wanted to talk about the market. Kennedy took this warning and sold his entire stock portfolio and began shorting the market. The bet paid off big time, and the shoeshine boy has been a metaphor for market bubbles ever since. Yo, think about that. 2020, 2021, what did we see? Anybody and everybody on YouTube, on the streets, at your job, everybody was talking about the stock market and how you could make money, how you could become a millionaire. And a lot of people came to prominence during that time. Wow. History sometimes gives you all the indicators that you need, for real, for real. During a big market boom, everyone looks like a genius, since everything is yep. constantly going up in value. But after the market crashes, it becomes clear who's real and who's fake. And I personally experienced this in 2009. I picked up a book on real estate investing by an author named Robert Kiyosaki. It seemed to have some useful information in it, and it was a nice change of pace from the economics textbooks I'd been reading in college. But something seemed off about it. See, the book was published before the housing bubble collapsed, and all of the assumptions in the book were based on the outdated expectation that housing prices would never go down. In hindsight, the strategy he outlined looked a lot more risky than he made it sound, and that ultimately led him to being labeled a fake guru online and eventually even filing for bankruptcy in 2012. So, whoa, I didn't know that Robert filed for bankruptcy. Uh oh, I gotta look a little bit deeper in that. If you guys know the whole story in that, please comment below, let me know. So, rule number one seems ironclad, right? When we see a guru type hyping an investment, we just need to check their track record and we'll easily be able to tell if they're the real deal or not, right? Well, it's not quite so simple. See, sometimes people make legitimate mistakes, but are still well-intentioned. This happens for a few reasons. Sometimes people just get ahead of themselves, like when Bill Gates published a memo in 1995 about the internet tidal wave that was around the corner. His message was crystal clear. The internet was about to change everything, and he was laughed at on late night TV for making such aggressive claims. But here's the weird thing. Bill Gates was wrong in the short term, but right in the long term. The first internet tidal wave caused tons of investors to wipe out during the dot-com crash, but anyone who built for the long term wound up sailing off into the sunset. So if it was 2001 and you were- I would say be careful with that statement because there's a lot of companies in the dot-com bubble that completely disappeared. Do you guys remember Pets.com? That was one of them. So had you even invested at the bottom of Pets.com, it still didn't, it doesn't exist anymore. It filed bankruptcy. They got bought out, I think, by, it could have potentially been by Amazon. I know the big players that did survive was Amazon, eBay. Um, those are the only two that I really know of off the top of my head. But be careful what, what he just said there because, I mean, he's kind of correct, but not because a lot of companies went to zero were watching your portfolio of internet stocks crash, you'd probably be pretty justified in calling Bill Gates a fake guru, but then you'd be proven wrong over the next decade. So we can't purely look at recent track records to determine if someone is the real deal or not. We have to go deeper. Well, maybe we should follow the money. It's always a little suspicious when you see someone asking people to pay for information these days, especially considering how much information is widely available for free online. And <coughs> Nearly everyone who gets called a fake guru regularly has some sort of paid online course that they are constantly shilling to their followers. Dropshipping, crypto trading, life coaching, and more are all ripe targets for paid courses. And I've even seen people selling courses about selling courses. It's extremely meta, but I guess when you've run out of things to teach people, the best option is to just teach them about teaching. These paid products sit at the core of every fake guru accusation. Most people wouldn't care if these gurus were just shouting into the void on social media. The problem always comes when they convince people to overextend themselves and go into debt to pay for some expensive course or seminar that simply doesn't provide the value they promise. So this feels like a simple rule we can apply across the board. 
If you're charging people money for information, you're probably a fake guru and should be avoided. Ching, ching, ching. Please write that down. Get your notepad. Write what he said. Write down what he said. I'm not saying all of them are like that because I'm just going to be real. There's a lot of people I know who are selling courses that you can't have. You can't get a lot of value from. Um, but again, it's pretty much just recycle information and kind of present it in their way of teaching. Sometimes to dumb it down for you just to understand a little bit better. Um, so... Sometimes it's worth it, sometimes it's not. You, you have to do your due diligence. But a blanket statement like this doesn't quite work out in practice for a few reasons. Just look at all the counter examples. First, let's look at the billionaire author of Shoe Dog. Phil Knight co-founded Nike and spent decades building it into a massive global athletic brand. There's no doubt that he's the real deal when it comes to business. He's worth tens of billions of dollars and anyone can independently verify. Yo, that is one ugly ogre. I never knew how this guy looked like, but holy crap. I'm not trying to be all judgmental here, but that guy is an ugly man. But when he got money, women don't care. Look at Lil Wayne. He impregnated some of the finest women out there. And ugh. just look at that guy. He looks like a koala bear, like a beaten up koala bear. It's disgusting. That man is an ugly man. Look, I have no problem judging men. I am straight as can be. I'm confident in myself, but that man is an ugly man. ...his accomplishments in a matter of minutes. He's basically the opposite of a fake guru. But then why doesn't he give his memoir away for free? The book is an international bestseller. It's clearly helped millions of people deepen their understanding of business. And it's even being adapted into a Netflix biopic. Phil clearly doesn't need the money from the book sales. So why not let the information be free? Well, publishing a physical book does have a real cost as does distributing it to bookstores across the world. I'm sure dozens of people helped him edit the story, translate the book into different languages, and design the cover art. All of those people should be paid, and $14.99 is a reasonable price to ask people to pay for such an entertaining book. So all you guys selling books out there, dude, $14.99 is a good price. You may not make a lot of money off of it, but you could use Amazon Fulfillment Center to do these books for you, but just lower the price. There's no reason you're charging $40 to $50 for your book, and you worry nobody. You are not a Warren Buffett. You're not this guy who created Nike. You're not Elon Musk. You're nobody. Stop charging $50 for your book. Stop being selfish. Stop being greedy. Jesus. Clearly, the value a reader gets from Shoe Dog is greater than 15 bucks. So instead of getting called a fake guru, Phil got a gleaming review from one of the biggest value investors in history. Warren Buffett. But a $15 book is hardly a strain on most people's finances. A $1,000 course, on the other hand, actually could be. So let's talk about course sales. This is where lots of fake gurus start making real money, and it's also where things start to get predatory. If a book promises to reveal some secret truth about success and it doesn't, so what? You're out 15 bucks. But if you spent thousands of dollars with the expectation that a particular course would help you transition careers and it's filled with a bunch of nonsense, now you have a problem. So it's easy to look at anyone who's selling courses online. Thank you. Thank you. Did you hear that? For everybody who's selling a thousand dollar courses out there, did you just hear what he said? Understand that. Once again, I suggest everyone read that book, The One Million Dollar Deal. I think that's what it is, a hundred million dollar deal. Doesn't matter, it's by Alex Hermosi. Read that book. Again, most of you out there who are selling courses, you seem to skip the chapter that includes the value. If you're gonna charge a premium price, make sure you add that value to it. Because it's like what he said right here, it becomes predatory. And then you get upset when people do a review like myself, and it's not positive. And you're like, oh, you're just a hater. You're just upset because it didn't work out for you or blah, blah, blah. You know how many crap courses I went through that I haven't done a review yet on? Seriously. Seriously. Oh, but the person seems nice. Oh, oh, trade and travel. She seems so nice. Doesn't matter. Of course, it's crap. So, yeah, man, like, y'all stop taking advantage of people. I'm just saying, for real. Just stop. 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 That aggravates the hell out of me. You would think that <laughs> I, uh, I went through a bunch of courses. And, and like, instantly labeled them a fake so guru. A but I think this I is a mistake. Have, I've personally had great experiences with many online courses, ranging from completely free to thousands of dollars. And I'll Word. give an example. A few years, I was getting really interested in motion graphics and wanted to learn a new program called Houdini. The software is notorious for having a steep learning curve, and I was struggling to make progress by myself. So I paid around $400 for an online class called Stop Being Afraid of Houdini. 
The class was taught by an experienced Houdini artist, and after watching the lectures, everything really clicked for me. I didn't become an expert overnight, but I learned enough to get comfortable. The key here is that the promise of the course was extremely narrow. The instructor was only focused on teaching you the basics of this particular software and made no claims about what you could do with those skills once you had them. He never said, you'll be able to work on the next Marvel movie or this will change your life forever. Online courses are actually one of the most powerful ways to learn new skills in my experience. And some courses really take a lot of money to produce. Truly knowledgeable people could spend their time making money applying those skills. So you can't write them off just because they're charging for courses. But there's one thing that always seems like a major red flag, paid advertising. You remember that viral video Ty Lopez paid to promote all over YouTube back in the day, here in my garage? It always seems suspicious when someone is paying money out of their own pocket just to give you advice. It just doesn't add up. These ads clearly cost a lot of money to run, so they must have a plan to make a profit in the future. And that's certainly the way it works for most fake gurus. They blast ads out across social media and then slowly push potential clients through a funnel to get them to spend more and more money. It might start with a semi-affordable online course, but then quickly progress to more expensive mastermind sessions and in-person conferences. Have you guys ever been to any of those conferences out there, those free real estate conferences or the ones where like um, Kevin O'Leary will show up or Dame from um, Shark Tank? I've been to one of those. In fact, um, I went to one where Kevin O'Leary showed up and I quickly realized this was just an event to upsell you. Not only, I mean, they put him in the front like, hey, this is Kevin O'Leary. He's going to be our guest speaker, blah, blah, blah. Um, he's going to give you all these tricks and trade and secrets and he didn't give you any of that stuff. In fact, he was actually just paid to show up there and give a motivational speech for like 30 minutes at the end. And then uh, the guys previously to that are the ones who are shilling you this educational program that 99.9% .9 of people fail. And it's usually like around anywhere from between 500 to like $3,000. And you go through that mastermind course. And when we get to that mastermind course, they sell you some more mastermind courses, which are going to be around the forty to $50,000. Man, so many people get scammed into these. I went to one of those and I quickly, quickly realized this was a scam after I paid $1,000 and got my refund, just so you know. <laughs> I did. I'm not going to lie. But as ridiculous as that Ty Lopez video is, the crazy part to me is that what he's actually saying is completely reasonable. <laughs> At the time, his pitch was basically to encourage people to read more books about business, and he would make money off of these ads by selling people a book club where they would receive a box of books in the mail every month. Even though Ty basically became the poster boy of the fake guru phenomenon, the importance of reading really can't be understated. Warren Buffett has been a voracious reader for decades, but it was perhaps Mark Andreessen who put it best when he said, there are thousands of years of history in which lots and lots of very smart people worked very hard and ran all types of experiments on how to create new businesses. I was just thinking about something. I'm sorry, this is completely off topic. And um, do you remember Netflix before the streaming services? They used to deliver movies in the mail and they were just saying that Ty Lopez was it had this book club where he would send books through the mail. How come that doesn't exist? for books like I don't I mean besides you know Ty Lopez I don't even think he does that anymore he does something else I think like e-commerce now he keeps shifting what he's doing um but why doesn't that exist why doesn't it exist where you can go on a website like Amazon and pick subjects that you're into and then they ship you to books like two books a month or something when you're done reading you turn it in and it sends you two more books that'd be that's kind of a good idea like the Netflix of books that would be dope yeah, but books are so cheap these days. Mm. But I'm just saying, that was just an idea. It just, it just hit me, whatever. Invent new technology, new ways to manage, etc. They ran these experiments throughout their lives. At some point, someone put these lessons down in a book. For very little money and a few hours of your time, you can learn from someone's accumulated experience. There is so much more to learn from the past than we often realize. You could productively spend your time reading experiences of great people who have come before you and learn every single time. But even though Mark Andreessen might be saying something similar to Ty Lopez, he's not paying to promote this concept. But there's another billionaire who does run ads, Ray Dalio, the founder of Bridgewater. Dalio has published two massively successful books full of advice, and they've earned broad acclaim. The weird thing is that his team will actually pay to promote his ideas on Facebook. So what's going on? 
Well, I think Ray genuinely believes that his ideas are worth spreading, so he's okay with paying to promote oh, no, his books grudge. online. Is that what Ian there is another possibility, stole? though. <laughs> These books serve as great recruitment <laughs> tools for the hedge fund he founded. Oh, At the end dude. of the day, a business is only successful if talented people choose to work there, and dude. Ray's books certainly put Bridgewater on the map. I'm sorry, you guys probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but um, the, the, the master investor right there was uh, had this little secret sauce stuff called the holy grail and then you see ray dalio over here with the holy grail man this guy legitimately steals everything as a desirable workplace so if we can't immediately discard information from people who run ads promoting their content how can we reliably draw the line between fake gurus and valuable teachers in order to answer this question, I asked two YouTubers who have studied fake gurus over the past few years, James Johnny and CoffeeZilla. Interestingly, they both said oh, essentially the same thing. It comes down to false advertising and predatory marketing. The hallmark of a fake guru is someone who claims to be able to completely change your life, help you get healthy in just a few weeks, or make you a millionaire overnight. These promises are impossible to make good on even for the best business leaders in the world. But these fake gurus have no problem over-promising and under-delivering because they know that there are always more potential customers just around the corner, at least until CoffeeZilla makes a video exposing them. So now that we have a solid framework for analyzing fake gurus, let's take a look at Graham Stephan. Graham has been remarkably successful on YouTube and clearly has a rabid fan base who listen to everything he says. He easily could step over the line and become a fake guru, but has he? Well, in terms of advice, he's extremely conservative in his recommendations. He's always citing sources and recommending tried and true investment strategies. He's never pumping sketchy crypto projects and his constant I guess this video didn't age very well because he got caught up in the whole FTX stuff as well as established titles, if you want to call that a scam. Reasonably priced at around $400. And most importantly, they are narrowly targeted at teaching very specific skills, mainly YouTube video production and real estate sales, which are areas where Graham has clear experience. If he was constantly dropping new classes about topics that he had no experience in, that could quickly become predatory, but he doesn't. So Graham clearly isn't a fake guru. But YouTube is still a messy place filled with disinformation and predatory marketing. So stay safe out there. And if you want to learn some business advice from the investors behind. Well, that was it. So what'd you guys think of that? I think this guy covered it perfectly. The Graham Stephan thing did not hold up, unfortunately, because he, he got caught up in the whole FTX scandal. And um, yeah, but out of all of those people in that group, to me, he was the least predatorial one out of all of them. Anyways, until the next video, y'all, please check out my recent interview with um, um, a principal. So we're just talking about education system in general and how it's lacking a lot of stuff. It's a great conversation. It's not really finance related, but check it out. You can see it right here. So until next time, y'all, peace out. See y'all next time.